Hi guys, welcome back to Fantastic Mr. Fox. Yesterday we read about how the uh, farmers were coming after Mr. Fox and his family with shovels trying to dig a hole. Mr. Fox and his family dug down. So now we're going to start chapter five, the terrible tractors. As the sun rose the next morning, Bogus and Bunsen Bean were still digging. They had dug a hole so deep you could have put a house into it but they had not yet come to the end of the fox's tunnel. They were all very tired and cross. Dang and blast, said Bogus. Whose rotten idea was this? Bean's idea, said Bunce. Bogus and Bunce both stared at Bean. Bean took another swig of cider, then put the flask back into his pocket without offering it to the others. Listen, he said angrily, I want that fox. I'm going to get that fox. I'm not giving in till I've strung him up over my front porch, dead as a dumpling. We can't get him by digging, that's for sure, said the fat bogus. I've had enough of digging. Bunce, the little pot dwarf, looked up at Bean and said, Have you got any more stupid ideas then? What? said Bean. I can't hear you. Bean never took a bath. He never even washed. As a result, his ear holes were clogged with all kinds of muck and wax and bits of chewing gum and dead flies and stuff like that. This made him deaf. Speak louder, he said to Bunce and Bunce shouted back, got any more stupid ideas? Bean rubbed the back of his neck with a dirty finger. He had a boil coming there and it itched. What we need on this job, he said, is machines, mechanical shovels. We'll have him out in five minutes with mechanical shovels. This was a pretty good idea and the other two had to admit it. All right then, Bean said, taking charge. Bogus, you stay here and see the fox doesn't escape. Bunce and I will go fetch our machinery. If he tries to get out, shoot him quick. The long, thin bean walked away. The tiny Bunce trotted after him. The fat Bogus stayed where he was with his gun pointing at the foxhole. Soon, two enormous caterpillar tractors with mechanical shovels on their front ends came clanking into the wood. Bean was driving one, Bunce the other. The machines were both black. They were murderous, brutal-looking monsters. Here we go, then, shouted Bean. Death to the fox, shouted Bunce. The machines went to work, biting huge mouthfuls of soil out of the hill. The big tree under which Mr. Fox had dug his hole in the first place was toppled like a matchstick. On all sides, rocks were sent flying and trees were falling and the noise was deafening. Down in the tunnel, the foxes crouched, listening to the terrible clanging and banging overhead. What's happening, Dad? cried the small foxes. What are they doing? Mr. Fox didn't know what was happening or what they were doing. It's an earthquake, cried Mrs. Fox. Look, said one of the small foxes. Our tunnels got shorter. I can see daylight. They all looked round, and yes, the mouth of the tunnel was only a few feet away from them now, and in the circle of daylight beyond, they could see the two huge black tractors almost on top of them. Tractors, shouted Mr. Fox, and mechanical shovels. Dig for your lives. Dig, dig, dig. Chapter 6, The Race. Now, there began a desperate race, the machines against the foxes. In the beginning, the hill looked like this. After about an hour, as the machines bit away more and more soil from the hilltop, it looked like this. Sometimes the foxes would gain a little ground and the clanking noises would grow fainter and fainter. And Mr. Fox would say, we're going to make it, I'm sure we are. But then a few moments later, the machines would come back at them and the crunch of the mighty shovels would go louder and louder. Once the foxes actually saw the sharp metal edge of one of the shovels as it scraped up the earth just behind them. Keep going, my darlings, panted Mr. Fox. Don't give up. Keep going, the fat bogus shouted to Bunsen Bean. We'll get him any moment now. 
Have you got sight of him yet? Bean called back. Not yet, shouted Bogus, but I think you're close. I'll pick him up with my bucket, shouted Bunce. I'll chop him to pieces. But by lunchtime, the machines were still at it. And so were the poor foxes. The hill now looks like this. The farmers didn't stop for lunch. They were too keen to finish the job. Hey there, Mr. Fox, yelled Bunce, leaning out of his tractor. We're coming to get you now. You've had your last chicken, yelled Bogus. You'll never come prowling around my farm again. Sort of madness had taken hold of the three men. The tall, skinny bean and dwarfish pot-bellied bunts were driving their machines like maniacs, racing the motors and making the shovels dig at a terrific speed. The fat Bogus was hopping about like a dervish and shouting, Faster! Faster! By five o'clock in the afternoon, this is what had happened to the hill. The hole the machines had dug was like the crater of a volcano. It was such an extraordinary sight that crowds of people came rushing out from the surrounded villages to have a look. They stood on the edge of the crater and stared down at Bogus and Bunsen and Bean. Hey there, Bogus, what's going on? We're after a fox. You must be mad, the people jeered and laughed. But this only made the three farmers more furious and more obstinate and more determined than ever to not give up until they had caught the fox. These two are pretty short, so I'm going to read another one today. Chapter 7. We'll never let him go. At 6 o'clock in the evening, Bean switched off the motor of his tractor and climbed down from the driver's seat. Bunce did the same. Both men had had enough. They were tired and stiff from driving the tractors all day. They were also hungry. Slowly, they walked over to the small fox's hole in the bottom of the huge crater. Bean's face was purple with rage. Bunce was cursing the fox with dirty words that cannot be printed. Bogus came waddling up. Dang and blast that filthy stinking fox, he said. What the heck do we do now? I tell you what we don't do. Bean said, we don't let him go. We'll never let him go, Bunce declared. Never, 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 cried Bogus. Did you hear that, Mr. Fox? Yelled Bean, bending low and shouting down the hole. It's not over yet, Mr. Fox. We're not going home till we've strung you up dead as a dingbat. Whereupon the three men all shook hands with one another and swore a solemn oath that they would not go back to their farms until the fox was caught. What's the next move? asked Bunce, the pot-bellied dwarf. We're sending you down the hole to go fetch him up, said Bean. Down you go! Not me, screamed Bunce, running away. Bean made a sickly smile. When he smiled, you saw his scarlet gums. You saw more gums than teeth. There's only one thing to do, he said. We starve him out. We camp here day and night watching the hole. He'll come out in the end. He has to. So Bogus and Bunce and Bean sent messages down to their farms asking for tents, sleeping bags, and supper. I don't know, guys. Do you think they're going to be successful? I'll tell you, chapter eight's title is The Foxes Begin to Starve. Mm, I'm going to keep my fingers crossed for them, but let me know what you think. See you guys tomorrow for the next chapter.